Second lecture of our class. So we have discussed some of the basic course structure for this class and uh, further we have gone on to discuss some of the applications where the motor drives are useful, particularly all the drives are getting replaced by the electric motor drives and uh, which is where we see that importance of understanding different aspects of electric drives. So we have seen the overall block diagram you can say where the major components are shown over here. So definitely we must have electric motor and uh, it is connected to some load through a shaft or many times load is mounted directly on the electric motor. Then there must be some power electronic converter which is having the controlled operation of this motor and then some power source which is feeding this power electronic converter. Now to control this power electronic converter or to have suitable operation, we need a controller. So basically which will provide the gating signals to this power electronic converter and that control will work on basis of lot of feedback. So whether it is sensed uh, for the input voltage and current or output voltage and current or sometimes speed, torque, position, all these things are sensed and then giving the feedback to the controller which will act on basis of the reference given to it. So we may have a reference speed or reference torque or reference position. So it will act according to that and it will try to have a suitable operation of this electric motor so that whatever your performance criteria is that can be met. Am I clear up to this point? Yes sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes sir. Then we have discussed different types of motors. So several motors we see uh, no, around us, DC motor, induction motor, synchronous motor and all that. Then we have seen different type of power converters which are being used in uh, such applications. Then what are the techniques through which these are operated? So some PWM techniques and then some of the classifications for the power source, then the control unit what is present over there, then the sensors which all are mounted or installed with the motor drive. These things we have seen and then we have discussed the load. What all different types of load could be there. Now today's lecture will be dedicated more for the load or the mechanical dynamics. So we will try to understand what happens or how it happens. The whenever we are taking power from the motor, how it is getting distributed, where is it going? So these things we will try to discuss. In short, we say that we are going to discuss the mechanical dynamics of our system. So up to this point, any confusion, any doubt do you have? No, sir. No, sir. OK, still some people who are behind curtain, no, they are not visible. Please turn on your camera. It is always good for better interaction. So we are somewhat like 15 people in the meeting, but I cannot see 15 people on the screen. Sir. Yes. Sir, I have a doubt uh, that uh, uh, it is a general doubt that sir, uh, if uh, we have to observe a variable inertia hmm. uh, in a practical aspect, then how can we uh, in a machine uh, like you mentioned in cement mills, in uh, paper mills, we observe this. Hmm. So how can we practically see uh, whether an object has a, a variable inertia? OK, any answers for this? Any answers for this? It's a correct question, something which anybody would like to know. But what could be the possible answer? Can anyone suggest? How can you know that your inertia is varying? OK, let us see. This is where we come to something which is called as mechanical dynamics. When we are talking about dynamics, that means it involves any type of change what is coming onto the system. You understand my point? So first we need to define it mathematically that how this system will be Oh, performing or behaving. You understand my point? So different components when you see that a motor is connected to some load. Oh, 
what all quantities are being involved in the mechanical dynamics so definitely there is some motor torque there is some rotational omega is there and then some load torque is there isn't it these three quantities are there maybe if you say position or you know, something else acceleration these are all related to omega position is nothing but integral of this speed or acceleration if you say so it is nothing but this you understand my point so when i say these are the fundamental quantities which means anything else you can express in terms of these quantities now how are these quantities related and there is one more very important property or uh, quantity you can say which is basically the moment of inertia of the system now how all these are related with each other mathematically when we ask so many of you might be knowing already the equations for this can you suggest uh, sir uh, electrical torque equal to load torque plus uh, j uh, d by dt of j omega is this complete yes sir uh, one more term is one more hmm omega and d plus b omega b omega plus b omega yeah say again shambhunath it's not audible b omega b omega sir b omega right sir omega dj by dt omega dj by dt very good answer then you say b omega then you say something else see what i feel this is all part of no you can say the load is tau l but this is very important thing which is coming up over here see in general if you have to write this equation this can be written as tau e equal to tau l plus d dt of j omega isn't it yes sir so what does it say what is j omega how is it defined sir angular so, moment yes 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 some physics also you need to revise now this is basically your angular momentum now angular momentum is not just mass or inertia or not just the speed it is product of both which means any change in either of the quantities or both quantities would change the angular momentum so whatever torque is applied from the motor that is distributed in two components one which is countering the load torque which is balancing the load torque and the other component which is basically involved in change in angular momentum change when i say it could be positive or it could be negative understand the point now this is what we have expanded the previous equation what we have written i will write it once again slightly clearly over here so this will be divided in two components and this is what we see as the most general equation for the motor dynamics so you have two components one where inertia is not varying but the speed is varying and other portion where the speed is kept constant but inertia is varying so this applied electromagnetic torque will be distributed in three components largely one the load torque another which is changing the speed and another which is involved with the change in inertia now when you say steady state operation what is meaning of that uh, there is no change in the system there is no change in the value of any quantity over here which means you will have d omega by dt and dj by dt both going equal to 0 okay 
normally generally throughout the course what we will discuss is basically this part of the equation where our inertia is kept constant okay generally these kind of systems we would discuss in this course so the equation which will define our mechanical dynamics will be this understanding my point so this will be ignored we are not dealing with the systems where inertia is variable as of now unless we go for any special requirement or any special application so now you understand someone how this is happening how can you identify there is change in inertia the applied electromagnetic torque will tell that whether you are having any change in inertia or not if you are applying anything which is more than your load torque and more than what is required to change the speed it is definitely going into the into balancing this change in inertia yes sir Correct. yes sir i got it so this is the equation which we will deal with and this is what is the dynamic equation when i say dynamic equation which means what it is taking care of any change in these quantities now when i say steady state which means what d omega by dt will be zero which means our electromagnetic torque will be balancing the load torque only and speed will remain constant you understand the point yes sir is that clear to all of you yes sir now let us move ahead no one more uh, point say this dynamic equation whatever we have written this can actually provide information about many other things for example power so what is power if first, first i ask like how will you write power what is power and i am asking from the mechanical perspective torque into speed sir yes so basic basically this is tau into omega yes. so if you want to understand how the power is flowing into the system where is it going and how it is balancing you simply multiply omega on both the sides of the equation what you will find is that tau e into omega equal to tau l into omega plus j omega d omega by dt so this is what what is this quantity this is your electromagnetic power which you are feeding into the system what is this quantity the power taken by load understand my point but what is this so if i rewrite this part i can write it like for constant inertia okay now what is this quantity change in kinetic, kinetic energy. energy this is basically the kinetic energy so this term denotes the change in kinetic energy or rather the rate of change of kinetic energy because time is involved it is not just change but how fast it is changing derivative of that so your power whichever you are feeding from the motor that is the electromagnetic power it is getting balanced so balance in terms of what either it is fed to the load which demands so much of power so it could be fan it could be any other thing which demands that if i have to rotate at this particular omega i need this much power that's what the fan is demanding or the blower is demanding and rest of the thing is going into this rate of change of kinetic energy again in case of steady state what will happen this is the dynamic condition you are changing your kinetic energy and all but under steady state condition the kinetic energy will be constant 
so if j is constant omega is constant which means what your momentum is constant and then your kinetic energy is constant then your power whatever you are feeding from the motor will be balancing the load power only you understand this point fine yes sir yes sir yes sir okay now let's go one more step ahead and we talk in terms of energy what is energy power into time or power into time <clears throat> the better way to say it is integral of power over a period of time not just power into time because power may be something like this over the period of time how would you multiply at which point you want to multiply so it is basically the total energy fed to the system is nothing but integration of this power with time understand the point so if we integrate this equation whatever we have got for the power over here with respect to time we will arrive to the energy equation this is p dt equal to p l dt plus and we are going from say zero initial condition to integrating over a time period 0 to t fine now what is this quantity this is basically how much electromagnetic energy you have fed into the system so this is something like you can call as electrical energy or electromagnetic energy how much you have fed into the system now the second quantity is how much energy the load has demanded from the system when i say energy it is a continuous thing it's not at any instant it is over a period of time and then what is the kinetic energy of the system so whatever energy you are feeding from the motor that is going into two parts one which is consumed by the load due to friction due to any other thing whatever means it is consuming that energy that is one part and second what is spent in increasing the kinetic energy from zero to what value it is at you understand the point so this yes, sir. you can call as the energy equation now the interesting thing to see over here is there is no separate steady state or dynamic equation for energy balance it is one equation which is valid for all the time there is no steady state equation for this there is no dynamic equation it is what it is energy is a continuous quantity you understand the point So, yes sir yes sir different things we have discussed over here say power or let us start from torque we have torque we have power we have energy now if we discuss about the properties of these quantities we have seen that energy is something like continuous there is nothing like no the uh, energy is different for the steady state energy is different for the dynamic no it's a continuous quantity it has to be accounted for the entire period of time so this is we can say this is continuously varying quantity whereas power or torque if you see this can be let us say it is at this value this much power you are taking next moment it can go to some other value you understand my point similarly for torque also the variation in torque may be maybe you are applying a positive torque and after some time you are applying a negative torque so these quantities can be discontinuous 
whereas this is something like a continuous quantity this has to be a slow varying it there cannot be abrupt change in energy to have abrupt change in energy you need to apply infinite power or infinite torque understand the point here yes sir yes sir yes sir good similar observations we can make about our other quantities say acceleration omega and theta now notice that why this kind of behavior energy is showing because energy is involved with some integration step and this is basically accumulating over the time small small sections you are adding and that is what is reflecting over here as energy so wherever integration is involved that quantity cannot be discontinuous okay now if you come to the other three quantities we have acceleration speed and theta now what you can say about these quantities how about acceleration first is it continuous or discontinuous yes sir discontinuous 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 why because acceleration is something which is only dependent on the applied torque so d omega by dt which is acceleration basically which is equal to 1 by j times of tau e minus tau l so this does not involve any integration if you remove this alpha is simply equal to this so if torque can go discontinuous so is acceleration but how about omega continuous continuous yes so you cannot have abrupt change in speed speed is basically integration of this over a period of time so you cannot say that your speed has changed suddenly that cannot happen yes it may change fast but it cannot be discontinuous you understand my point so this is a slow vary continuous quantity how about theta so continuous yes because theta is again integral of speed so which means this involves a two level integration if you see from the acceleration point of view so position must be continuous you cannot say that your machine was at position theta equal to 10 degree and suddenly within no time it has shifted to position 90 degree this cannot happen there may be fast change however fast it is but it cannot be discontinuous you understand my point so when we are dealing with these quantities and mechanical is something which is very much involved with the motor drive when we are dealing with such quantities we must be very very sure that how these quantities are going to change when you are seeing the result in simulation or any other place you must know what is happening with your system am i clear so someone talks about power you know that how it may behave someone talks about energy you know how it may behave or theta or omega you can tell that how it is someone shows that this is my omega can it be correct it cannot be you can only have a slow varying now this slope can be very fast but it cannot be instantaneous slope may change you may change something like this also but it cannot be instantaneous understanding my point so have a feeling about the system what you are dealing with okay now this is what we have seen in the mechanical dynamics now some things we need to see about the load torque so we have three components over here this part i am talking about so partially we have discussed this in the previous class also 
Now, how this load torque could be? So many of you are saying that B omega and all these things. So these are different types of torque or load torque which could be there with the system. Okay. In general, if we have to define this load torque, this could be a very, very general torque could be something like K naught constant plus K1 omega plus K2 omega square plus K3 omega Q and so on. This could be a general expression for any torque which you may see in the system. Now these constants K0, K1, K2, K3, all these may be different. You understand my point? Now some of the common loads, let us say, in under which scenario you will see a constant load torque only. Under which scenario you will see only a linear load torque. Under which scenario you will see a omega square kind of profile. These things we may see and then some complex load which may involve different torques for different sections of speed. So first, let us say, when we talk about, let us say, the elevator or lift or crane. So what is involved with this? They are all lifting some load. But when lift is going up, you observe that it is not acceleration, accelerating continuously. So if any lift is there, it is moving up, more or less it will maintain a constant omega or constant speed V you can say. Now what it is doing basically, it is balancing your weight. That is all it is doing. That much force is applied, which means the nature of torque, what is applied on the motor is kind of constant. So you have tau L of this nature. Understanding my point? Similar thing with crane or lift or elevator. The speed is not changing. Once it is maintaining that speed, it is maintained. Whatever load has come, it is only balancing that. So this load torque may look like this. Constant with time. The profile may look like this. Now, next thing could be, let's say excavators or when those the equipments which are used for mining applications so what they are doing basically they are lifting something from deep underground mines or something then the nature what load torque has is basically it is proportional to the speed understanding my point so this may have or in general it may have something like a constant value which means some initial load torque it has to overcome and then as the speed increases this is dependent on that. So the profile may look like either this which is this option or it may look like this with time. You understand this point? Yes, sir. Okay, these are all different types of load what we may see in nature. Okay, so when you are going for a particular application, you need to have this understanding in mind that what you are going to face. Correct? Now, third example, if we talk about applications like fans, or blowers or compressors these kind of applications if we see the load torque is generally proportional to the square of the speed so difference is there here it's only linearly proportional to speed whereas in the next case it is going square of the speed so general expression you can write like k0 plus some k2 omega square where k0 may be 0 or non-zero depends on the particular field where you are applying this so based on that either the profile may look like this or the profile may look like this 
sorry here it should be omega not time we are talking with respect to omega you understand the point so any of the applications where you are going to involve fans or blowers or compressors you need to be ready that up to what speed you can operate the load torque is going to increase with this omega square relationship so you need to be prepared up to what speed you are operating and then what torque you may face correct the system should be suitably rated for that now little bit more complex example which is something like a traction load or you can say electric vehicle so when we talk about this kind of load this is not having a particular you no know, nature of load torque throughout the speed here the load torque changes with the speed so if i have to draw let's say i will say initially it needs lot of torque and then the requirement for the load torque reduces and then finally it may fall even more sharply you understand the point so with omega we may see torque load something like this so what is happening up to this omega 1 we are having a constant torque say tau not then between omega 1 and omega 2 what we are seeing is that it is having something like inversely proportional something like tau 0 plus tau 1 by omega okay where tau 1 or k1 something may be positive or negative whatever way and then finally this between omega 2 and omega 3 it may fall linearly or directly drop this all could be the nature of load when we are talking about traction load or electric vehicle so in general you can define tau not then tau not plus k1 by omega and then finally some k2 plus no uh this k3 into omega something like that linear relationship could be there and these are valid for different reasons of speed this tau not is valid only between 0 and omega 1 when you go from omega 1 to omega 2 you have the second profile over there and finally between omega 2 and omega 3 we have or you can say for this omega greater than omega 2 it is this kind of profile up to the speed where you are going to operate this is the final speed fine so that is how different load torques we may encounter in a general scenario it may follow a particular profile it may have a combination of different profiles and it goes like that fine any doubts over here any doubts over here no sir no sir no sir then we move to something very very important which is called inherent stability of mechanical system now what do you mean by stable system what is your understanding about stable and unstable system some answer please hmm the equilibrium point uh, uh, load torque and, and the uh, um, motor torque also no no i am not talking about motor torque or load torque as of now i am simply asking what do you understand by a stable system sir does not changes with any disturbance what does not changes run at steady state uh, okay if you run at steady state what will happen um, motor will uh, operate at uh, okay i am not asking about motor okay, sir bounded asking, hmm sir bounded input gives a bounded output okay that's a little bit more mathematical <laughs> definition 
but i am asking general feeling what do you have about a stable system or unstable disturbance the system should be in our control okay that is more about control when when the system gets in disturbance it come back to its initial exactly level. that is what we are looking for see there may be three different types of systems either it may be stable or unstable or indifferent indifferent meaning we will see let's say if i ask you that i have a surface like this and i am placing a marble in this okay i am placing a marble in this kind of surface and you disturb this marble what will happen sir it will come back to the initial so state it will oscillate for some time correct so whatever you apply the disturbance let's say move little bit on this side or move little bit on this side ultimately what will happen it will settle down to this position you understand my point this is what is called a stable system if the system is able to restore its original position after disturbance is given that's what ajay has said if we apply any disturbance on this system the system restores its original value or original state correct yes sir now moving to the next type exactly opposite of that i place the marble on this kind of surface now tell me what will happen this part i will from the uh, it will not come to the original state yes. such systems are called unstable system where it cannot restore its original position on its own it will run away from this actual value if you slightly touch this what will happen it will fall either on this side or if you give disturbance on this side it will fall on this side it cannot restore its position on its own so these are called unstable system it may be there for some time but once you touch once you give a perturbation once you give a disturbance it is gone these are called unstable systems and what is indifferent you place the marble on a flat surface wherever you leave it it will stay there it doesn't matter to this if you disturb this little bit on the left side it will go and stay there if you disturb it little bit on the right side it will go and stay there these systems are called indifferent system they are not worried or bothered about restoring the position or running away from the position wherever it is it will stay there fine now in motor drives also we do see such kind of scenarios one of these three types how to identify that how to identify that how your system is whether it is stable or it is unstable or it is indifferent how do you identify that you cannot go and give disturbance and then see what happens okay you will damage everything then how do you identify okay let us go a little bit more no graphically we understand let's say there is a disturbance of delta omega given to the system okay it was running at some speed omega and i have given a disturbance of which is equivalent to delta omega not this is the value okay now this delta omega not whether it will increase keep on increasing after giving the disturbance or it will reduce back to zero so delta omega is basically change in speed that's why i am saying if any change is given this much amount of change is given whether it will run away with more disturbance or more change in speed or it will come back to zero on its own that's the question you understand this scenario 
yes sir so which one is stable let's say i mark it number 1 here number 2 here which one is stable number so one so stable operation means that if you give any disturbance it should come back to zero value the disturbance should come back to zero value which means what it is restoring the original omega of operation unstable basically means that whenever you give disturbance it is never able to come back to its original value it is always increasing now i am drawing it little bit exponential because there is certain reason behind that and that's what we need to see how can you define it or how can you see that which one your system is having whether it is having a stable operation or it is having unstable operation the indifferent may look like this third curve if you give omega it will stay here that omega will be maintained delta omega will be maintained so either of these three points we are going to see now we will take help of our equation the dynamic equation what we have seen earlier now whatever we do whatever we work we do on basis of this equation this is what defines what our system is going to be or how our system is going to behave now scenario let us say i give you where we have the load torque and the electromagnetic torque okay and these are intersecting at this point means at this point they are balanced and which is where the system is operating the point here is omega not this is the speed at which the system is operating here tau l and tau e are balanced you understand this point yes sir yes sir yes now question if i increase the speed little bit on this side what will happen changes load torque or up to one load torque load torque is greater than motor torque no no just see that first we we'll, let's go step by step right your load torque and electromagnetic torque both have changed their value with the speed isn't it so let's go slow let's say omega i have introduced a perturbation of this much value delta omega so what is my new speed that is omega not plus delta omega any doubt in that any doubt in that no sir no sir no sir now the electromagnetic torque so here let's say at this point the value of electromagnetic torque was tau e0 and at this point the load torque was tau l0 now after perturbation the electromagnetic torque has become tau e which is basically what tau is zero plus some delta tau e any doubt in that no sir no sir good similarly the load torque has become tau l zero plus delta tau l any confusion in this part no sir now for whatever value so whatever value you write over here for electromagnetic torque for omega for anything this equation is always valid so we can plug in these values into this equation and let us see what we get so i am writing this here so tau e0 plus delta tau e equal to tau l0 plus delta tau l plus j there are two quantities now omega and delta omega and both are dynamic by the way so j d omega not by dt plus delta omega by correct now from this point of operation we know that at this point the system was balanced okay so which means what our electromagnetic torque load torque and this dynamic things were balanced tau v0 was equal to tau l0 plus j d omega not by dt fine this step is clear right yes sir. yes sir. this is what our steady state point is 
Now the remaining part is basically what is our perturbation. Okay, now we should be able to define this delta tau e and delta tau l in terms of omega. So mathematically we can express any delta f function if we are you know, writing with respect to the quantity x, then this can be written as this. So tau e also we are writing with respect to the delta is with respect to omega or delta omega to be precise. Delta omega is the new variable. Okay, you can say alpha or something if you want to make it simpler for you. So this I can write like dou tau e by dou omega or delta omega, whatever, plus, uh, sorry, into this minus dou tau l by dou omega delta omega equal to j Is that fine? Is this fine? Now basically what you have yes. is Now you see when we are having any let's say system about the equilibrium point when we see in the vicinity somewhere here, the, the load torque or the electromagnetic torque can be seen as little bit linear, which means what? The slope, this is basically slope of the torque with respect to omega, right? Slope of the electromagnetic torque with respect to omega, slope of load torque with respect to omega. So this is what basically the difference in the slope of the two. So we can say like a common variable, something like K. So basically this is what slope of electromagnetic torque minus slope of the load torque. Something like that you can see. So that's a constant you can say. No, near the equilibrium point always it will be a fixed number. It cannot be very different or very variable kind of thing. So then this can be written as k into delta omega equal to j of this. Fine. Now this equation what you have got over here, it can be written as d of delta omega by delta omega is equal to this is the differential equation, first order differential equation which defines how your perturbation is going to behave. We are talking about the perturbation which is delta omega. How this perturbation is going to behave? whether it is going to stay at that particular point, whatever perturbation you have given, or it is going to converge to zero, which is the stable option, or it is going to run away from that, which is unstable option. You understand the point? Now, what is the solution of this differential equation? What is integration of this? Is this fine? So we can always write this as this is the solution of this differential equation. And we know at t equal to 0, what is the value of delta omega? It is some constant, whatever perturbation we have given, delta omega naught. This is the initial perturbation what we have given. So then this constant you can figure out C and then this can be written as fine. This is the solution of this system. Now tell me under what condition this delta omega will converge to zero or it will remain at delta omega naught or it will grow infinitely. See, which are the quantities you, know, you see over here are variable. So if you see, there are only two parameters, k and j. j is fixed. Okay. Now first, 
ऑप्शन इफ आई आस्क इफ के इक्वल टू जीरो व्हाट विल हैपन सर एंड डेल्टा ओमेगा विल ऑलवेज बी इक्वल टू डेल्टा ओमेगा ओमेगा जीरो सो दिस इज व्हाट दिस इज द इनडिफरेंट कंडीशन विच मींस व्हाट एवर परटर्बेशन यू गिव इट इज गोइंग टू रिमेन एट दैट इट इज नॉट गोइंग टू चेंज एम आई करेक्ट Yes, sir. Hmm? So, yes, what is meaning of yes, equal to zero? The question is that it is not just mathematically we are understanding. What is meaning of k equal to zero? Uh, so, load torque is equal to like that. No, not just equal, but the slope yes, of the two torques are also equal, which means the both torques are almost overlapping. So, not just this kind of profile. it may have even this kind of profile as well both overlapping together so when it is overlapping it doesn't matter even if you change the speed from here to here it will always be balanced there is no change in applied torque and so your speed is going to remain whatever you change to it doesn't matter to this hello sir yes sorry and we have a class from 11 yeah sure we can stop here so we will continue from this point tomorrow at 2 pm okay okay sir good thank you sir. any thank doubt you, to the class or you may leave for the class thank you sir thank you